That's two years since Black Lives Matter protesters took to the streets of Washington and the rest of America, demanding an overhaul of the criminal justice system and, importantly, pushing for racial equality. So, how much has been achieved and what more still needs to be done? Author and strategist Glenn Singleton believes courageous conversations are the key and he's in Australia and joins us now in the studio. Glenn, thanks so much for joining us on News Breakfast. It's good to be here. Good morning, Glenn. Tell me why you set up Courageous conversation, uh, Conversations and who is it for? Well, I set it up because I believe that in order to really get at some of these challenges of racial disparity and racial inequity, um, not only in the United States, but, but witnessed all around the world, uh, folks have to have an ability to simply talk about these issues. And we grow up, we are socialized through education, our families and friendship circles, our businesses, and we never really get um, a real method to have this conversation. And so uh, Courageous Conversation is for everyone, and um, we are here to uh, help uh, folks in the region throughout the country to begin these conversations. Okay, so uh, w Glenn, we all know uh, people who, uh, let's face it, are racist, perhaps family members. Uh, it is often a very awkward situation at family get togethers, getting together with friends. How do you start a, a courageous conversation uh, with one of your family members or friends? who you believe is racist, how do you approach that? What's, what, what advice have you got for people? Well, I, I think, as you're saying, uh, because we are socialised in a society where racism is pervasive, uh, we s need not see this as the problem in the person. We need to see it as something quite normal. And, and so we don't want to marginalise folks. We want to give people an opportunity to talk about their lived experiences. And in doing so, race is going to be present there. But people will inevitably, in some scenarios, get uncomfortable, defensive, um, they get their backs up against the wall if they are confronted or questioned about a comment that might be racist or insensitive. How do you then suggest that people go about addressing those conversations if someone becomes confrontational? Right, and, and, and as you said, that is somewhat predictable and, and in the protocol for Courageous Conversation, which I wrote, um, it actually presumes that folks are going to get uncomfortable. Mm. And, and so in this way, um, the discomfort becomes normal. And, and while we're talking about something that you've said or, or some behaviour, we want to disconnect that from your total being. Mm. So you have said something that I perce perceive to be racist or you have acted in a way that I perceive to be racist. That's not me calling you a racist. Mm. And, and that's what we hope folks will try to uh, move back from, the, the kind of naming of a person and, in their totality and the positioning of what's just happened here. And, and how we can, as we move forward in our friendship and our work relationship, not have that occur. Great advice. Glenn Singleton, thanks for your time and enjoy your stay in Australia. Good to be here. Thank thanks. you.